Hi, I'm Darren, and welcome to Level Up Double E Lab. Today's episode is number five on my simple amateur radio receiver project, and the subject matter, it's all about the audio. So I want to start by thanking Jim Forkin, amateur call sign WA3TFS, just like I have in all the other videos. It's his design that I'm building on for this project. Now, I did go through the audio board AGC circuit in one of the prior videos, and there are, of course, three other elements on the board, the audio uh, preamp, the power amp, and the notch filter. Now, the notch filter is very interesting, and that's what we're going to dive into today. Here's the notch filter portion of the audio board schematic. On the left, Q1 is the audio preamplifier. Nothing fancy here, it's a classic common emitter amplifier, and its collector is capacitively coupled to the base of Q3, which is the active portion of the notch filter. The magic, so to speak, happens on this side of Q3. Notice how the signal is taken from both the emitter and collector of Q3. That gives us signals that are out of phase with each other. Next, we have a series RC element and a parallel RC element. The resistors in these two elements aren't shown in the schematic. They're two 5K pots ganged together. That's the notch frequency adjust control on the front panel. As you turn the control, both pots increase or decrease together, which means the time constants for the two elements track each other. The signals from the two RC elements are recombined here at C14, and the net effect is you get a destructive interference at their cutoff frequency, which effectively creates an adjustable notch filter. For reference, this little table shows the calculated center frequencies for several rotation angles of the 5K dual gang potentiometer. The calculation is simple. Here's the equation, and as you can see, the resulting frequencies are mostly within the range of CW transmissions. Notice that the response is very nonlinear with respect to the potentiometer rotation angle, and at the far clockwise end, it even goes above the audible limit. That's actually a good feature of this simple circuit. All you have to do to disengage the notch filter is just rotate the pot fully clockwise. Make a note of the center frequency at 50% pot travel. It's 637 hertz. I'll be referring to that value later. And here's the LT Spice simulation. I'm showing the output response versus a frequency input sweep from 1 Hz to 50 kHz. I've overlaid the response for three potentiometer settings. The red trace is at 1% of pot rotation, or 4950 ohms. The blue trace is at 50%, or 2500 ohms. And the green trace is at 99%, or 50 ohms. Look at how sharp the attenuation response is for the green and blue traces. It gets duller at high frequencies, but that range is of less usefulness. The 50% setting, the blue trace, has a calculated notch of 636 hertz. That's spot on with the manual calculation that I showed earlier. Okay, so let's set aside theory and simulation and get on with making this bad boy. I made my own board and it turned out nice. It wasn't particularly challenging, and since it's only audio frequencies, I made it single-sided. I even brewed up a fresh batch of tin plating solution and got a sweet uniform tin coating as a result. Fast forwarding, here it is all populated and with the flying leads for testing. Yep, like I said in a prior episode, it looks like a sea of electrolytic caps. At least the trim pots stand out. And here's the SMT side. My hand soldering as usual isn't going to win me any awards, but it gets the job done. Also, I'm not bashful about using zero ohm resistors as jumpers whenever I run into a routing problem. They're a hack, but a very useful hack for single-sided copper. Now, on to the lab. All right, I'm in the lab and I've got the audio board right here connected to a whole bunch of test equipment. So let me walk through the setup here and explain what's going on. So first, in the background, the Heath power supply that's providing the 12 volt, um, 12 volt power for the board. I have this speaker connected to the output, and for the input I'm using my Simpson function generator set to a sine function, and I'll just run it through some low-level audio frequencies. Across the output, 
uh, the amplifier basically across the speaker. I've got two items. I have my multimeter set to look at the frequency of the output just so we can get a numerical reading. I've also got that same output connected to my 465 scope so we can see it on screen. And lastly, here's this ancient meter that I've got connected to the S meter output of the board. That'll be more relevant uh, in the second video that I'll show here when I put our, a actual audio uh, and music track through the amp and we can see what the response looks like. So, so for this first test, what I wanted to show is a output condition when I'm just swinging through a range of sine frequencies. And I've got the notch filter set to the upper end of the uh, travel so it should not be in the circuit and we should be able to pick up the audio here too so uh, let me turn this on it should be at low frequency and I'm turning the control up should top out about one kilohertz or so And we can see that there isn't a notch filter effect in there. There is some change in amplitude because this isn't a linear uh, uh, magnitude, linear uh, output function generator, but it's working. So now what I'll do in this, in this next shot is I'll put the notch filter in the middle of its travel so that we can see the effect. What I've done off camera is I've set the frequency control to get as close to 637 hertz as I can and there's no vernier control on this Simpson so not much fine resolution. So I got pretty close, 633 hertz is, is close enough. I'll turn the volume up just a bit more. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do, I am gonna adjust the notch frequency control. Now it is set at the maximum, and watch what happens as I approach that middle, that detent where it should attenuate the signal. And there it is, it's at mid travel. That's a 50% travel. So just like the simulation and the calculations predicted, if I go lower, and our signal comes back up but also not to the same magnitude it was before. Recall that this is way, way not linear, so we're not going to have the same range of adjustment from the bottom half as we would the top half. Taking it to the top half, past the detent right here, we get back to a full signal again. But it is confirming the calculation, it is confirming the prediction, and I love it when reality matches theory. Okay, for this evaluation, I want to show something that's a little more subjective than actual quantifiable measurement, but nevertheless, it shows the effect of this notch filter control through music coming through the, the amplifier board. Now, always a concern about what music you play uh, on YouTube and risk a copyright takedown. So what I've got on my classic iPod, I'm drafting it into service here again, is the Level Up Double E Lab theme song. <laughs> it's a uh, modern time by Alan and Joan, and it's in the library of YouTube music that you can use without royalty uh, licensing and so on, so no issues there. And a couple things to look for. Um, let's watch on this oscilloscope screen the effect of engaging the notch filter. Right now, I yeah, I have it set so it's disengaged, and when I turn this on, There it is. We hear what sounds like ordinary music, full range. And on the scope, we can see we're getting low frequency, mid range, and high frequency um, all interleaved, which makes sense for music. Now, watch what happens when I engage the notch filter, meaning I'm going to turn this to mid range, which is going to put it at about that 637 hertz point. You can hear a noticeable change in the sound of the music. We're missing those mid-range tones. Actually, we're missing most of the low end, too, because look at the pattern on the scope. It's all upper, higher frequency response and turning the control even further to the low end takes out most of the bass response. So this is working as we would expect. This is the response we would expect for our notch filter. And, as I mentioned earlier, now that I'm putting some music, something that has variable amplitude and frequency over time, we see a more realistic response from the S-meter output. Now, I will have to scale that for the Arduino, but 
it, the meter provides at least a subjective uh, evaluation that it's working fine. So let me turn this back all the way to the top, take it out of circuit again, and there we have it. So I'm pleased with the performance of this audio board, and I do have to make a few other fine adjustments for the, the S-meter output, but I think it's ready to go. So that's it. That's the audio section of this project, and it's turned out very nicely. Now, what's coming up next? i got to get back into the RF sections, and the big item is the bandpass filters, and I have spent a lot of time getting the first couple of those working. I've had some ups, and I've had a few downs with trying to get these to work properly, and most of it's been some mistakes that I've made. And as I say in my trailer for my channel, I share the good as well as the not-so-good, the things that don't turn out as expected, just so you can see some of the lessons you learn when you uh, experiment with electronics. So as always, if you like my channel, please be sure to subscribe and uh, click that uh, like button below. So until next time, bye for now.